Rich and Kay Camaro from Fairfield. Good afternoon, Chris. My name is Don Sebastian from Fairfield. I've got two major issues that they've been somewhat addressed here already. Uh, the first would be on the government spending as far as, uh, you know, we're so quick to cut money from programs that we actually need and there's other programs that are things that are funded by the federal government that I don't think they should be getting money like uh, your, a lot of your special interest groups like PETA, etc., are getting millions of dollars every year from the government. They have their own following of supporters and to actually compete against somebody like that is like fucking big business. I mean, we as a small people, we as a small state trying to deal with that. Uh, my other issue is uh, also your big companies like Monsanto, who are constantly pumping uh, all sorts of chemicals on our food. Uh, they're saying, no, we don't have, it, it's perfectly fine for you. And all of a sudden, you, you start going into their studies and find out they were wrong right from the start. It's been proven five years later. And what's happening to them? Nothing. So they get a slap on the hand. And as far as uh, a lot of the laws that have, uh, or the restrictions that have been put up by them and people that are in the government, great. Here you go. The government doesn't quite know how to write it. So we have people from Monsanto. We take them into the government. They write it that makes it prudent in for them so they can get away with what they're doing. And then they go back to Monsanto. It's a, it's a back and forth situation. I think that's a, one, a terrible situation. And we're the guinea pigs. Where are we going to be a couple hundred years from now? Look at the problems we're having now because of the chemicals that they're pumping into our foods. And nothing's happening to them. I can understand the worldwide problem. Do you have another issue? Uh, 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 well, also on the money situation. Uh, well, of course, you know, I'm going to hear this. I said, I didn't hear the House of Representatives and the Senators say, no, we don't need a raise this year. We're going to turn back our 5 or 10%. And my big thing is also on that is the, uh, uh, as far as everybody in the House and the state represented, why are they not subject to the same laws that we are? Sure. Okay. They, they're above that. And that's just on the government side. Let me take both of these. They're, they're both good. Um, so listen, you uh, and, and I should talk a little bit more about the, 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 the Monsanto on chemical issues. You've got information. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to have it. Um, I'm getting sort of more interested and more involved in that uh, in that issue. But um, I would love to, to to learn more. The broader issue you bring up is the enormous power that special interest corporations have in politics today, um, and there's no way around it. They do. Um, they have that power because they put a lot of money into campaigns. They spend a lot of money independently to try to defeat people that they don't like, and then they just crowd Washington and Hartford with massive amounts of lobbyists who, um, you're right, sometimes write the legislation, uh, and other times just crowd out other voices, and it can't continue this way. It can't continue this way. It's a barrier to changing the status quo on everything from energy policy to healthcare policy to food policy, um, and to me, um, if there's a panacea uh, to this problem, it's campaign finance reform. Um, it is getting these uh, big money interests out of campaigns, it's making the tough decision, as the Connecticut legislature did um, some years ago, to say, you know what, we as a civilization would rather put up a couple dollars a year for a publicly financed campaign fund rather than having these things run by special interests. And I'm not telling you that, you know, there are these deals happening like you see in the movies where, you know, somebody's coming with a contribution and saying, if you take this contribution, will you vote for my bill? That's that's not how it happens, and when it does, those people get arrested. But there's just a coziness to the relationship that happens over the years through the campaign finance system that shouldn't be there. Um, on the second uh, question, um, I think this is a pretty common misconception that members of Congress aren't subject uh, to the, or members of the state legislature aren't subject to the same laws that everybody else uh, is. For instance, people think that we're not in the Social Security system. We are in the Social Security system. Um, we actually have had a pay freeze for almost as long as I've been in the uh, Congress, at least the last three years, since uh, three or four years since the economy took a dive, Congress has frozen its pay. Um, I actually proposed to do something. This came from um, this came from my meetings on the health care bill. A lot of those sort of Tea Party folks who came to those meetings were making this claim that you know if you're going to pass a health care bill, you have to be subject to it. And so I actually 
wrote an amendment that ended up getting passed into law that said that um, you know the healthcare bill sets up these exchanges where people that don't have insurance can go buy insurance from the exchange, which is basically just a fancy word to say you know a marketplace with different private insurance companies offering plans. Um, and so um, the healthcare bill included a provision that said there's only one group of people in the entire country that will be mandated to lose their health insurance and be forced to get their insurance from the exchange by virtue of the passage of that bill, and that is members of Congress and their staff. So um, in 2014, members of Congress and our staff, so some of the people who are here today, um, we all are kicked off of the federal employee health care uh, benefit system, and we have to buy our insurance from the exchange. Now, I actually don't, I've never taken health care from the federal government, um, so uh, my family gets it a different way um, through my wife's employer, but um, I thought that was a pretty important change uh, to say that, you know, if we're going to create this exchange, one of the best ways to make sure that the insurance is it, in it is good insurance is to have members and their staffs, uh, you know, get their insurance that way. Oh, yeah.